Rich Music. Liz Kershaw's legend in your own lunchtime. Oh, hello, Richard. Oh. You alright, love? Yeah. What, have you had trouble in your taxi or something? No, I'll ask him your lift down and that. Do you know what? I went to bed at 10 o'clock. I thought, right, it's Liz. I'm going to behave myself. I'm going to bed early. Oh. Gets up, three car pile up on bottom of morning Sheffield. So oh. I, I got dropped off at bottom of morning. But it was quite nice because, uh, obviously, we hope that everybody involved is going to be safe. Yeah. Obviously. But I walked through the streets of Sheffield, which I hadn't done for a while, so it was quite nice. Mm. Well, last time you were on, I think you did have a raging hangover. So. <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I did feel for you, because you had a gig that night, and only a couple of hours to get your head down. So I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're in good fettle today. Anyway, how are you and how's your leg? I was going so to ask the, you about is, your... Is a, sorry. sorry, can I just interrupt just one second? Sorry about this. I've yeah. just got to tell him what to do to when he's finished. Can you dial that number up on that phone so I can let you out? Oh, yeah, OK. All right, yeah. yeah. Just dial yeah, that. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheers, Marvelous. Ian. I'll leave you to it then. Yeah, thanks, thanks ever so much. Right, well, just tell our listeners, you see, Richard's locked in a cupboard at BBC Radio Sheffield. And we're talking to him through the wonders of technology. I didn't realise you were actually locked in unless you had the secret code to get out. Oh, yeah, this is it. I live here. Radio <laughs> Sheffield. <laughs> are, you, are you now in a, a little room with hessian lined walls and no windows? You've got it. Right, got I've it. got you in picture. Oh, no, there is a window. Oh, I can see a crane. Luxury. Oh, right. Yeah. But anyway, how is your leg? Talking of it, accidents. Because you brought your leg and you got an album out of it. It's a while ago now, isn't it? It's ancient history, that, though, isn't it? Well, I don't know. Don't know how chronic your condition is. I'm just, <laughs> hoping, just hoping you're all right. I love your concern, Liz. I really do. Do you know what? I saw your kid the other day outside our back gates. Why was he hanging about there? He was with Martin Simpson, walking dog. Oh, right. Well, Martin's my neighbour, you see, mm. so they were walking dog, and we went... We got as far as our far as cigarette would take you. Oh, well, that sounds par for the course. And then yeah. I went somewhere else and they went somewhere else. But, yeah, we, we ended up like, yeah. Oh, we'll have nice. had enough of the Kershaws by the end of the month, won't you? Yeah, we'll get another half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've just heard Off Of My Mind, which is a real belter and the opening track on your current album, Further. Um, now, I just want to say before we go any further... Congratulations on your 20th anniversary. You truly are a legend of British music. It's official. Do I get a plaque or something like that, or just tooth plaque or something? You know? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I do brush, brush my teeth, so maybe it's the other kind, you know what I mean? Well, may, maybe you'll get one on your back gate and our Andrew can loiter a bit more outside. Uh, yeah. So what's been your favourite bit then? Of all the, you know, long pigs, touring with Pulp, solo stuff, working with... Other bands, particularly, I'm fond of a girl called Eddie that you mm. work with. She was popping in and out of here quite a bit in our early days. So what's Erin, been, yeah, yeah what's been She's... your favourite musical role? Well, writing for films, writing for TV. You've got a musical coming, haven't you, in Sheffield? Humming with the dogs. You know, just like literally, probably humming physically, like I need deodorant or something. But is is um no, just my favourite bit is the the making up of things. And mm. I usually write songs walking the dogs and um, by the river, and it's just that bit really creating stuff is the best bit really like kind of and then seeing it sort of happen, and then you you kind of you know that that's the best bit for me you know n not the hanging about getting the pat on the back I prefer to just keep moving less you know what I mean. But the public reception and appreciation must mean a lot must be rewarding as well yeah, of course it is it is amazing you know and and um the fact that people you know they back you and you know i'm a bit of a three-legged dog you know i'm not like somebody that you, you think well he's going to win a race the fact that people have got so many options of what they can do with the time and the fact that they choose to support me it it, it does it means a lot Liz. you know mm. but throughout all the success you've stayed in your hometown you haven't been tempted to run off to la or anything like that you're happy mm. in sheffield still why would you well i know lots well, of people do though don't they uh, well do, do you know a long time ago i the, the people think this is a fortune you know like a gift or something but i got nominated to go to the brits and it'll be the first and last time that i ever go to anything like that because for somebody like me it's horrendous 
And I, I just remember being with a couple of bands who shall remain nameless. Mm. And they were kind of, you know, so oh, it's right difficult. And they were only young. And they were just going on, oh, it's right difficult, this whole pressures of this and that. And the other, I says, what pressures? Well, you know, we, the publicity people take us here and blah de blah And I says, do you know what? And my, my old mate, who was a security guard who I've known for years and years and years, called Jumbo, and he's no longer with us, I, I adored him. And I, I just said to him, I goes, I need to get out back for a sig, because you can't do that. It's all official, you have to go down this red carpet, all like that. And I just know all lads who work there, so I've known for years, I just, I just need to nip out back door for a sig. And just took these young lads, I said, uh, you can escape this so easily. And they went, ow, oh, ow, oh, we feel trapped. And we went to a pub round the corner that was filled with septuagenarians and octogenarians that were just basically in God's waiting room. Mm. And they didn't give a monkey's trouser a, who it was, and we just went to a bar, part of Guinness, sat down and chilled out. That's how you escape it. It's easy. And can you do that in Sheffield? Can you just walk along the moor without being stopped every two minutes? Well, I've just done it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. There we yes. are. It's that thing, isn't it? It is somebody goes, uh, aren't you famous? And I, my reply is, well, evidently not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, talking of, uh, you know, your hometown and uh, your culture, somebody tweeted me when I said you were coming on and said, ask Richard about John Grant and a chip butty. Does that mean something to you? Yeah, John, yeah. Tell us the story then. Well, as we all know... Let's just start at the beginning. We all know that John is an utterly beautiful soul, mm. right, first off. And uh, I'd met John. It was a bit of a pop star thing, I see this. But I was on Jules Holland. And John was on the next kind of thing, you know, to me. And I, I just watched him. I just heard him sing. I thought he sounded so amazing, you know. And I just walked up to him and just said, you're ace, basically. Just mm. hello. That was amazing, and and um, we just got chatting, and uh, shared phone numbers and all that. And then when when he was playing in uh, in Sheffield, he just called me and he says, you know, I've got a, a an afternoon off. Is there anything cool I can do? Like nice? I said, yeah, come for a walk with dogs. So I, I got a spare pair of wellies, and John put them on. We went for a walk in the woods, and then we ended up at a cafe that's a, like an old Nissan hut in the woods where I go a lot with the hounds. And uh, I introduced him to the joys of uh, the chip butte. <laughs> Did he like it? Loved it, yeah. And then he said, um, well, what are you doing tonight? I said, oh, I'm probably going to club with our lass. And he said, would you fancy him getting up and playing a song with us? And I thought, yeah, all right. And that was it, the start of a... A beautiful friendship. The oh, end. Wow. It's over at Chip Butty and a hello. And being genuine and... I don't like being nasty, mate. I, I prefer to just... If I see something really beautiful, I just need to let them know. I've been up to people and said, oh, thank you for all the pleasure you've brought me over the years and they've looked at me. <laughs> and <laughs> just, yeah, what? Can, security. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you have made references in the past to Sheffield landmarks. I couldn't believe it when I was checking my dates. Coles Corner was 2005, 14 years. Mm. It's just flown by. So, this album's called Further... Mm. You're leaving town. I'm going to play the single, the title track, and then you can tell us what it's all about. So here we are, Richard Hawley, Further, from the album, Further. The ocean is calling away. And we get further down that line. Well, that's uh, quite... Um, Pace-wise and mood-wise is, is very different from off of my mind. But is it about going on your holiday, summer holidays then? I just imagined, I was sat on our back and I was watching these lads like digging all. And I think they were doing something for telecom, some something like, oh, whatever, plumbing. And I was just, just thinking and it just reminded me of my dad and all his mates. And above us in the sky was all the trails of the planes mm. and it just reminded me of my dad just getting his head down and just thinking i've got to deal with this and then we'll be on a beach somewhere 
and I'd, that's the further really you're not really going anywhere because you're going to come back but people just working hard for the families and see what it takes us you know you know you've got that release coming and you can watch all the the trails of the planes in the sky knowing somebody else is going somewhere when you're there sat digging and all it's not in any way taking the rise or anything it's just it's a mark of respect that song for like my dad worked for 27 years 14 hours a day and i can't bear the sight of the sound even vaguely of me moaning because i am blessed because of that you know i i'm the same and i worked in a frozen food factory for six weeks nights 12 hours a night for 63p an hour and all i was focused on well i was doing this mindless task in, hor in a horrible factory was mm. oh i'm saving up to go to turkey backpacking the, that's it yeah you know and the kids are doing it and i bet uh, there's so many other parents out there that understand what that is and their kids are doing it you know and yeah. although that reminds me of a funny story my mate tracy she's quite a yummy mummy shall we just say and she's lovely inside and out and all like that but we were in a a club uh, it's the peas thing liz he's taken me somewhere in my mind and uh this young lad came up and he was trying to chat her up and she said, uh, how old are you? And he told her how old he was. She goes, I've got peas in my freezer older than you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I probably packed them in 1978. Yeah, well, there you go. Exactly. And they've been there ever since, you know what I mean? But just, I sorry, just... Yeah. Oh, no, it's funny, but I, what lesson that they taught me was that the women sitting either side of me who lived in the nearby council estate, they were doing nights... And they had, mm. they were, weren't that much older than me, maybe early, mid-twenties. And they were doing that to pay their rent and put mm. shoes on the kids' feet. And they were doing it forever. And for me, it was a bit of a, you know, a novelty. A gap, yeah. and, it, and And whenever I've thought to myself through the years, felt sorry for myself getting up for work or anything, I've thought of those women. I know there was no escape. Apart from perhaps two weeks holiday. That's what it is. It's just a, it's a mark of respect that song mm. to people that have the courage and strength to get up every day and do the same thing over yeah. and over again. And I, I experienced it with my mum. She was a you know my mum's just retired actually, and she was a uh, she started off as an auxiliary nurse and then she did a training and then she ended up working at Jessop's deliver uh, the, the first women's hospital in the world, Jessop's Hospital in Sheffield, and then she ended up being you know a staff nurse and stuff and had to work rate right hard. It's just a mark of respect. Mm. That's all. All that song is honestly, and we're not going anywhere. But actually, if you really look around you, you know where you're going. Where did you used to go on your holidays with your family when you were a kid? Cleethorpes. Oh, you went east, right. <clears throat> yeah, well, oh, as they say, if we're being posh, of course, you're thinking, well, you've got all your, your mates sat around club at table and that, oh, we're going to Knossos, we're going, where are you going? We're going to Cleethorpes. <laughs> 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 I thought you were going to say Bridlington. Right, well, you're off on tour, on the road, from the 2nd of October, 13 dates. And some of them are already sold out. The, the ones most local to you, Manchester Albert Hall, mm. and your two Sheffield Octagon gigs. But also you're doing, from the 2nd of October, Bristol, Cardiff, Norwich, Oxford, Liverpool, Birmingham, Newcastle, Glasgow, London and Brighton. Well, I'll tell you what, which song, let's play it, go out with a, a big song that you know as soon as you strike the first chords. Bless erupts. Can we not play one of mine? Can I do you do me a favour? Can, can, can you dedicate a song for me? Would that be all right? Yeah, do it yourself now. I'd love to dedicate this to Pete Oldale, and it's Just Walking in the Rain by The Prisoners. The Prisoners, you know, that recorded at Sun Studios. Johnny yeah. Bragg, who wrote the song, uh, they were, well, obviously prisoners, and uh, Johnny, he wrote the song in a cell, and he used to use the P bucket as a reverb chamber on his head. And uh, he got a pardon when Johnny Ray recorded the song. I just wanted to dedicate the original song by the Prisoners to Pete Oldale because he's somebody that I greatly admire. Well, it's been great to talk to you. Thank you for being in such great shape today. Yeah, no broken legs or hangovers, although I may cultivate both. And I hope you've got that piece of paper with the four-digit code to get you know, out, else. You know, I, I'm right glad you reminded me because... <laughs> I'll be stuck in here. I'll be like, Liz, I love you, you, you'd yeah. be like the prisoners on repeat. Yeah, right. Exactly. Richard, all the best, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Liz. Yeah? Love you, Baba. Oh, can we have a chip butty together one day? Will you come for a dog walk with me? Yeah. 
as long as we can take, a, you know, we have a destination to that cafe. Yeah. Just walking in the rain. The prisoners just walking in the rain, chosen by Richard Hawley. He could have plugged one of his own songs, but that's the kind of guy he is. In fact, it's given me inspiration. I think Richard and me should do a Christmas special where we just pick songs for each other and chat. Uh, David Hemmel says, what a great man, Mr. Hawley. Um, hearing you talk about John Grant uh, was a be being a beautiful soul was great, says Hula Girl. Fab interview. Thank you. How good was that John Grant story? I loved it. If something is beautiful, then say so. Quality. Another fan for Mr. Hawley and lovely song there too. And uh, the Mrs. Hater says, uh, Liz interviewing Richard Hawley, blooming marvellous, hashtag Sheffield. Yes, we'll have him back. Uh, still to come, all killer, no filler, one of you choosing Milo. Six music. This is BBC Radio. Six music. BBC News at 2.30. I'm Catherine Cracknell. The